And Councilwoman Hickey. Good evening, everybody. Let's see how quick I can get through this. Um, the past year, I've been having, we've been having some issues around McManus Middle School. Uh, the grounds, very unkept, different things going on. I had a call in our department of public works a few times. Uh, well, a few weeks ago, I met with uh, Mr. Miranda, who is the director of maintenance, Dr. Robert Tozzi, and also the principal, Mr. Fingerlin. Uh, we went around the school, the entire school, and I went over everything with him. You know, it was becoming a dumping ground, leaves weren't being done, snow wasn't taken care of, and yes, I had to make phone calls to the DPW. Um, the children weren't even able to walk around the sidewalks, and we do have a sufficient staff over at McManus Middle School. So after going around, I can see the past couple weeks, I don't have this problem at school nine or school 10. Um, after going around the schools, um, the past couple, even coming here tonight, uh, what a difference. Um, they're finally upkeeping. I guess things were set in order. They are also planning on getting new bicycle racks. I think the ones there are about 40 years old. Um, yeah, they were there when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just to upkeep the appearance, I, I, I sp told Dr. Robert Toz, you know, children, I want them to be happy to come to school. I don't want them to walk in the front doors or their parents to drop them off and it'd be such a somber place. Um, so that is moving along. We also had a couple trees cut down behind McManus and also at Alcala. Uh, Lincrest Apartments, our transportation authority has done an evaluation and is replacing the signs uh, around the apartment area. And also uh, Academy, Academy Terrace is going to be paved. We did receive funding for that. Uh, the bids were just approved, so we're waiting for that to happen. When it is paved, it will also go about 15 feet up uh, Andover Road, which has been a huge um, pile of potholes for I don't know how long. I don't know how many times we filled them. We keep filling them and filling them. Uh, let's see. In August, um, I confirmed this with Skoda the other day. I did post it on my Facebook and some other sites. I'm trying to get used to Councilman Medina's next door neighbor app. I'm not that great at it yet, but I'm trying. Uh, in August, we're starting phase two with the gas lines. These streets will include Lenape, Lenape Circle, Kent Place, Kent Circle, Amherst Road, Cornell, Cornell Fairway, Princeton, Exeter, Deerfield Terrace, Prospect, Edgewood, and Andover. So this should start sometime in August. Uh, earlier, I was told that it might be starting in May. It's not starting in May. It should be starting around August, and of course, I will update you in the future. Uh, Pembroke, the corner of Pembroke and Crescent Parkway. Huge issue with water drainage there and um, just making a mess. I've confirmed with the engineer that that work should be starting soon, and hopefully we'll get Crescent uh, Parkway paved as well. It's in very bad shape. And you know, we do have to remember we have St. John's uh, School there, and you know, um, per all the parishioners from St. John the Apostle Church. Uh, again, continuously filling potholes due to the gas um, work being done. Anybody needs uh, any done? I, you know, I can't find every pothole unless I hit it. You know, and type it in my phone real quick if I pull over. So please let me know. I was fortunate enough last week to be invited to the Union County uh, 200 Valor Awards, which um, nominates and presents award to, uh, it was about 10 people throughout Union County. It was a beautiful luncheon at the Shack of Maxson. Uh, one person from the 10th Ward that was honored was a railway fireman, uh, Ted Padavano. Uh, he did an amazing, he saved another police officer in a burning house. And then of course, uh, we had our four officers from Linden who were, were involved in the shooting with the uh, terrorist. And unfortunately, they weren't there because they were accepting a huge award in Washington, D.C. that night. But I was still proud to be there. Um, and I just want to mention their names, Investigator Peter Hammer, Officer Angel, P Angel Padilla, Investigator Mark Kahana, and Officer Dave Guzman. I was also happy to see in the booklet in 1983 that my father was in, in the booklet from when he received the 200 Valor Award when he was shot in the line of duty. So it made it the day even more special. Uh, Saturday, June 10th is a barbecue 
uh, for a cause for Relay for Life. It's in honor of Jacqueline, Jacqueline Wozniak, who we lost many years ago. This is the first uh, fundraiser they're having for her for the Relay for Life. It's going to be held, it's from 2 to 6 p.m. on June 10th, and it's going to be at Antoinette Modrak's house. Um, you can reach her on Facebook, myself. Um, it should be floating around all over there. On, uh, next Sunday, to, uh, the 2017 Preclampsia Walk um, will be happening at uh, Oak Ridge Park. This is something very close to Stephanie and Ronnie Forsch I can never say their name. Forschweiger's Hearts, uh, their daughter Macy, who's beautiful, was um, born very premature due to preeclampsia. Uh, fortunately, she's a beautiful young girl. Uh, both her parents work for our city, and if anybody can get out to support them, it would be great. Uh, in the Office of Emergency Management, I'm happy to say that recently we were one of uh, two Union County towns that received a grant, the FY17 grant for $9,400. Um, this is for activities and operations of Office of Emergency Management. So all these, we have um, Kathy Colgan, who's our best kept secret in Linden, who does an amazing job and goes out for all these grants and every bit helps because you never know when an emergency is going to happen. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Yamakaitis already mentioned Buffalo Wild Wings. I get these calls all day. You know, can you add this in tonight? Can you add that in tonight? Uh, June Lazaro is having a um, how you can control of your, get some tips on how you can control your money with Mary Baker on June 21st <laughs> from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Entrepreneur Business Development Center. Light refreshments will be served. And tomorrow night at the library, uh, Prime America June Lazaro, 10th Ward resident, she's a regional leader um, of Prime America, is having a, um, a little get together at uh, the Linden Public Library. That's from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, before Councilman Medina spoke about an incident that happened in our ward this uh, past week. And unfortunately, um, you know, our policemen can't be everywhere at every moment. And it's hard for me to explain to residents um, this happened about 2.30 in the morning. And yes, it was somebody watching the neighborhood. You know, things we take for granted and we don't see. Unfortunately, these group of people were targeting, they target uh, work vehicles, vans. I've also heard Fords um, with everyone's livelihood in them, expecting to go to work on Monday morning. Uh, the one resident who's, the, and they, stole, they took two at a time. So they went behind the one vehicle, they took the one van, sped around the corner. Uh, this other vehicle with other people in it followed them. Then they took um, a 21-year-old's landscaping truck with a trailer. And this young gentleman who lives in my ward also has cancer. And it's just, it's a very sad situation. Um, on my Facebook page, I have a GoFundMe. I have an amazing resident from the Ninth Ward that reached out to Councilman Medina. He's offering to give him a top-notch leaf blower backpack um, to help him get on his feet with his business again. I know many of my residents are in an uproar about police presence, but at that time and moment, um, our police were in another area of town taking care of a fatality. And, you know, it, it's a tough call. You know, everyone can't be, and we all took it for granted, and we weren't able to realize this vehicle was sitting around. Um, but all I can ask is for all the residents, you know, the police need our help as much as we need their help. You know, if you see something, please call. They're always, they're always there. Um, and they will try to get a car as, if it's available. And most of the time, they are available. This was an unfortunate circumstance. So, you know, I, it's frustrating, you know, what to say to the residents, because I know certainly they deserve to have a police officer there. And there was two gentlemen who weren't able to go to mo work Monday morning because all of their tools were taken. But I have confidence in the chief. I have confidence in our police department. With a congratulations to um, John Mekovitz. Wonderful. And we just have to work together. 
We need to call if we see something that isn't right. We can't take little things for granted and we have to work together. Yes, I'm almost done, but the last thing I just want to say is that um, people have touched on before that it is election time. And I just want to give um, a special thank you to my husband. And I'm going to say it publicly and I'm going to take a, couple, a minute for this. I am a married to an amazing man, amazing Irish man who likes to golf. And he's an honest, good, hardworking man that takes care of my family. And for what he has to put up with for me to be a councilwoman, I just want to give him a special thank you. And you know, I I'm just so appreciative. I can't, I can't say it enough. And he deserves that. Thanks, Joe. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, Councilwoman.